Hello everyone. Regular viewers of the channel knows this. In every my pre-market video, I do the candlestick analysis. So today we are going to talk about those candlestick trading. I mean, I don't want to bore you guys and wasting your time by explaining what is red candle, green candle, opening price and closing price, etc. and are all. Rather than I want to concentrate on what that candle is actually conveying, fundamental behind it. I mean, in my pre-market video, I often say this psychology of the candle, how we can see those in a different way, kind of. So in this video, I'll try to cover the single time scale candle, and in the next series video, I'll cover the multiple time scale candle. Without delay, let's start. First, simple one: long green and long red candle. A long green candle like the one in the picture here that has actually long body with small upper and lower shadow. It indicates there is a strong buying pressure. This is typically a bullish one. However, in the technical candlestick analysis, it should be looked in the context of the market. For example, a long green candle is likely to have more significance if it forms at a major price support level. Here, look at the Nifty daily chart. Between March and April period, there are three long green candles that formed in the important price support level. 17,000, 17,200, and 17,400. All indicates the strong bullishness and as follows the upside momentum. Similarly, long red candle with minor upper and lower shadow. It indicates the strong selling pressure, especially if it forms in the major resistance level. Then the price is more significant bearish. One more thing: the longer the body and the smaller the shadow, the stronger the significance in the candle formation. So we understand the long red and long green candle with minor upper and lower shadow. What if there is no shadow at all? Then that candle is called marubozu. Marubozu is a Japanese word meaning shaved head or close cropped. Basically, a stock or index didn't trade beyond the range of the opening and closing price indicates a long bodied candle with no shadow. Let's say in a daily chart on the uptrend. If this candlestick is formed means then the opening price is equal to the day's low and the closing price is equal to the day's high. The psychology behind that is the indication of greater demand for that particular stock or an index than that of the supply. Or simply we can say people are not willing to sell it. And it also signals buyers are buying aggressively, suggesting that the momentum may continue to the upward. On the other hand, a bearish marubozu in a downtrend, open equals high, low equals close, can signal further selling pressure, especially if it found at the top of an uptrend. Generally, marubozu will be further divided into two plus two. I mean, depends upon which side the shadow is not present. It is classified as opening marubozu or closing marubozu. Then, depends upon the color of the candle. It's further divided as green marubozu or red marubozu, etc. First bullish closing marubozu. It's like long green candle but without upper shadow. For example, if it forms in the daily chart, then this candle shows that for a short period of time, sellers took the control and drove the price a little lower than the opening. But buyers didn't allow the price to go lower and aggressively pushed the price to higher level with a full control to close the candle. So here, unlike the long green candle or long red candle, is not able to forecast market movements, and this formation has got low reliability. So depending on the previous day's candle, it can be both a bullish confirmation and a bearish reversal pattern. It only represents the given day's market behavior and can be both a continuation and a reversal formation. It's necessary to observe previous candles to determine the true role of the bullish marubozu closing. Now, similarly, bearish closing marubozu, long red candle with only upper shadow, no lower shadow, shows that although buyers drove the price a little higher than the opening, but finally that was the sellers who took the control and aggressively pushed the price down significantly to lower levels with a full control to close the candle. Moving on, third one, bullish opening marubozu. Here we don't have the lower shadow, which means from the opening, buyers had the control, but at the end, sellers had a little control, and the price is closed a little lower than the day's high or whatever the time period high. This candle may be just a little weaker than green marubozu. Finally, fourth, in the bearish one, we don't have upper shadow, 
but a small lower shadow that's similar to the bullish one. Now you may ask what if the body is small or the shadows are long or one shadow is small and the other long etc etc. So now let's see what other kinds of candlesticks we have and what they tell us. First spinning top. I mean when we have small body and both the upper and lower shadows are approximately equal then that candlestick is called spinning top. Here we may have different length of the shadow like small shadows or long shadows. The size of the shadows doesn't matter in identifying the spinning top. What's important is the small body. Also the color of the body doesn't matter because we have small movement from open to close. Spinning top shows a tug of war between the buying force and sellers. It's kind of an indecision and a standoff, a neutral candle. But there is one thing we can say here. It's based on the length of the shadows. I mean, in the case of long upper and lower shadows, it shows that both buyers and sellers were very active during the session and they drive the price up or down considerably, but none of them able to take the control of the price and the result was a standoff. If the shadow is smaller in length means then both the buyers and sellers are not aggressive and basically they are inactive. Smaller the shadow and smaller the body, greater the amount of indecision. However, again this too can be interpreted based on where it forms on the chart. I mean being bullish or bearish. For example, on the daily charts if it forms following an advance or near the resistance level then it is bearish. And it shows that buyers are weakening and there is a possibility of price reversal. Similarly, if it appears following a decline, downtrend or near support levels, then it is bullish. And it shows that sellers are losing strength and there is a possibility of changing in the price direction. Spinning top candle became more important or more reliable when they are formed with other candlesticks like morning, evening star pattern or harami pattern etc which we will discuss them in the next candlestick video. Moving on next candle. What if if we have a small body like spinning tops but one of the shadow is long and the other shadow is small or non-existent at all means. This is very very important and more often it forms in most of the charts. Highly probable candle but there is no one single name for it. I mean based on where it forms it has different names and different interpretations. Alright, first let's consider this type of candle where we have a long upper shadow and a small lower shadow or no shadow at all. I mean if the candle don't have this lower shadow then it makes the candle even more significant. Anyway like spinning top the price movement between the opening and closing is very small so the color of the candle is not important. Here the long upper shadow shows that at first buyers had the control and drove the price to a significantly higher level. But then sellers stepped into it and took the control of the price and pushed the price down near the level where it was opened. The psychology behind this is that when the price reached to the higher level either buyers was not interested to buy more or because of any fundamental reason or emotional or just being expensive at this high price level the number of sellers increased considerably and pushed the price back near to the opening level. Generally this candle is naturally bearish since it shows the selling pressure but as I said the significance and interpretation of being bullish or bearish depends on where it forms. For example if this red candle forms following an advance or near resistance level in other words if it forms near top then it's called shooting star. And this situation is bearish reversal since it's showing the selling pressure and gives the possibility of changing in the price direction. Similarly if the candle forms following a decline or near support level in another words it forms near bottom in the downtrend then it's called inverted hammer. And the situation here is bullish reversal since it shows that there is a new buying pressure because of being low. Here buyers were aggressive and were strong enough to drove the price to significantly high levels and thus the possibility of bullish price reversal. Now what if the lower shadow is long and the upper shadow is small or non-exist. Here too the significance and interpretation is based on where it forms but the difference is that it's opposite to what we discussed earlier. Anyway the long lower shadow shows that at first sellers had the control and pushed the price down significantly 
but in the end buyers had the upper hand and drove the price near to the opening level generally this candle is naturally bullish since it shows buying pressure but as i said the significance and interpretation of being bullish or bearish depends on where it forms for example if it forms in the bottom following a decline or near support level then it's called hammer and it shows buying pressure thus it's a bullish reversal whereas if it forms in the top following a advance or near resistance level then it's called hanging man this is a bearish reversal indication since at the top it shows the selling pressure i mean the lower shadow shows that sellers were aggressive and strong enough to push the price down other than this it just various doji candles and alone it's not that significant so that's all in this video hope you all got some useful information please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the youtube algorithm and will also motivate me to do more please don't make any investment decision based on this as i'm not a sebi registered advisor i am doing this for my and viewers educational purpose only thanks for watching